Good afternoon, my realtors. This is Southern Coast Southern coming at you with a little bit of a different video for you, for me. Today we're going to be reviewing a product that I was mentioning in one of my previous videos. You guys have probably have seen this on Amazon if you check out there on a regular basis. This is a 16... Um, this is the power distribution board manufactured by Eve Model. The in I'm actually doing something as I know got you guys are gonna really kill me in the comments, but I don't care. This is actually a product that I was looking for a easier system. But each of these boards can handle 28 LEDs or 28 incandescent bulbs. But there's also an additional feature that not many people know about on this. There's a third mode called direct. And wherever you pump into that board... Guess what? You're getting it. About a volt and a half difference drop. Because this pumps out DC. It's a bridge rectifier. Built smooth DC and all that. Now for a bit of a closer look. Right now I got currently 16. Well, whatever a Tech 2 2400. Power supply transformers pumps out. Right now I got it set up for remote. But there's. Three different ways you can power it. By a barrel jack. The screw terminals. Which is the way I'm doing it. And where you see input and output. The cables for those. Are included. This is one of those products. That they actually do give you everything. Including. The screws to mount to your layout. Now, the breadboard wires are a little bit of a different setup. In case you guys are wondering, I bought, personally bought four because I, after doing a review or looking at it, I liked it. But, if you're familiar with those jumper leads that come with the breadboard circuits, same ones. As far as the harness goes, there's several different setups here. You got the breadboard, which these are the wires. There's a black and a red one for powering to the next board. Then you guys might be familiar with these little guys from the just plug system. There's also provisions for those on this on the circuit board also. You plug them in. And the switched output I'll show you guys more in a minute. Right now I'm actually getting ready to solder it. Because this will be going on the current build. Which today I got that one little spot where the paintball is. The paint, well to put blaster cloth across. And what I'm going to do is lay the track across. Which in case you guys are wondering. This track becomes over comes out here and basically goes down low around through underneath the bridge then goes back around up a grade across the bridge back through the tunnel and back out there in the far corner my goal for this is to modify it which i'm already looking into i've already got the risers and everything to do so I'm going to take it and go from there, around right where those T-pins are, and bring it this way. And the same thing with the lower end, do bring it all this way. That was a quick minor layout update. But, as far as what else you get with that kit, you also get the little classic spacers to keep it off the board. And now for the screws. 
You see how small those things are. That's at least an inch long, though, which is better than what most companies do. But with that being said, the LED is currently off. When I flip the switch, and all the all the connections on that board are screw terminal. I'm use gonna be using. But you got the JTC connectors in the center. Then down here, that's what these guys are for. So you can put one side's positive, the other side's negative. And it's clearly done right on the board, which I can show you. This side of the board's the negative, the bottom row is the positive or anode cathode for you who you know your DCC, well, well, your electrical terms. But you're wondering, why is there a pot here? Well, I'm about to show you. And this is one of the other reasons why I picked this, because you can try it, turn that brightness right on down. Or, if you like a little bit brighter but you can see by turning it towards me dims it by turning it away and that's fat max brightness now the modes I was trying to describe to you right now as you can see I'm using a straight LED that's on the 3 volt now if I would put it in the center bang goes the LED because that it's coming in at 18 volt. Then you also have a 12 volt. Now as long as you put a resistor in series with this, you can run it, leave it at 12 volt and it's not gonna hurt a darn thing. But as for the switch, you may have noticed that the board came with, with a of course, where did I put it? It comes with a little, small little red jumper. Which I really need to clean this up, place up. Yes, you guys heard that right. You actually heard me state that. But, as you... Now, this, that's not even soldered. And you can see. You got a filtering capacitor coming off the rectifier ray right there. And then the output is where this is coming off of. This, uh, this side of the board is hot all the time. The output from this side, from the switch, side of the switch coming back, is what controls this side. So the resist, a variable resistor is controlling all this. Which makes it convenient so we don't have to. You want your whole village to have that constant bold light look? You can do that with this. But the other thing I picked up, which shout out to DIY and Digital, it may have taken me a while, but I was able to find them. Eve, Mo Eve Models, three signal lights and they're in my opinion they're close enough for end scale they're really they're slightly oversized but if you want working signals it is the cost we have to sometimes pay but these will be getting featured on the layout in, in the near future I do have a BDL-168. Now, of course, the headache part. I've been looking high and low for an SE-8C. It's a switch decoder slash signal de driver. I will have to connect the computer to it. That's a dead given. But... That's the board I'm going to need to control these little guys. If somebody has a link to one, 
or selling one, please contact me at southern207 at yahoo.com. Or if you have me on Facebook, which if you look under Tom Kovichak's, aka Tom's Trains and Things channel, you should be able to find me fairly easy. But with that being said, unless somebody has a way of interfacing with DBL-168, I'm kind of up the wire because I'm doing current sensing to block detection. <sighs> but I know it's been a while, guys, and it's just been pure chaos at work. That's the only answer I can give you. And an update on my boss. His wife was brought home. She's all completely off the ventilator, breathing on her own safely. And now my younger brother, on the other hand, is not doing too hot. He's got a ruptured disc in five and six in his neck and two in his lower back. Along with four, three broken ribs from a fall the other night. Yeah. I can't win worth losing. Oh well, that's life. Anyway, my rarities, have a good one.